Artificial intelligence or AI is for me as an investor the single most important investment theme to look for above average returns in the next decade. It's a fascinating field of innovation that is also comprehensive. And that's why I'm quite happy to be joined today by Richard Lightbout. Richard is the CEO for Robo Global in the EMEA area. And Robo Global is a company focused on investment and advisory in the field of automation, AI and healthcare. He will give us today an introduction on artificial intelligence. So welcome Richard. I'm very glad that you found the time uh, to talk to us about uh, investing in innovation and particularly on artificial intelligence. I know with Robo Global you have been following this theme for long. You're definitely a specialist in this area. So I'm, I'm very keen to go over the latest status of the AI market. Great, um, Jean-Paul, th thank you very much. Pleasure to, to be here and yeah, absolutely talking about our favorite topic of investing into disruptive innovation and, and particularly artificial intelligence. Let me just quickly start, tell you a little bit about what we do at Robo Global. So we're a private um, research and investment uh, advisory company. We focus exclusively actually on three themes. So robotics and automation, healthcare technology and innovation, and then artificial intelligence, which is obviously the, the, the focus for today. Um, there's about 4.2, actually it's closer to 4.4 billion US dollars of assets now tracking our three research managed index strategies. And really as, as a business, we think our time at Robo Global is really best spent researching these teams. So for, for us, that means that we engage with public and private companies, we meet their management teams, we score each company across a variety of, of filters to really help us identify best in class companies. And we then work globally with product partners who create ETFs and funds here, here in Europe. We actually work very closely with legal and general investment management. As a company, we, we started in 2013. We actually launched the world's first strategy focused on robotics and automation co companies. And then since Robo, we've launched the other two strategies, as, as I said, focused on healthcare tech and innovation and then artificial intelligence. You can see on the left-hand side of the slide here, we've got the 2020 performance for, for these three strategies. Just to give you some more up-to-date numbers, if we actually looked over the past 12 months, Robo is actually plus 85%. That's the, the robotics and automation strategy. Healthcare tech is plus 76%. And then artificial intelligence, which is the, uh, the think strategy, is plus 88 percent so some massive outperformance of, of global equities we'll get into this in a bit more detail later but really want to stress that the performance numbers that you see here is coming from a very diversified portfolio each of the strategies has about 70 to 80 companies in it we also weight the companies based on um, their score you end up with a, a modified equal weighting with roughly one to two percent positions per, per company. So there's, there's no concentrated bets here. And I think as investors ourselves, we focus on these three themes for um, se several reasons. One is that we, we absolutely feel that they offer to investors um, sustainable growth um, over a, a long period of time. There are also themes that really benefit society. There's a very natural tilt towards sustainable investing here. Secondly, for each of the themes, we can identify um, a significant number of relevant um, companies, high quality companies, where we can engage with the management teams and really evaluate them for potential membership. And then finally, these um, three strategies really align very strongly with the expertise we have in-house as, as a research team and also with, with our advisors. If we actually go to the, the next slide, I can just quickly share with you a little bit about our advisors. So this, this is a group of, of individuals here. You've got seven who have PhD after their name. Some of these names you, you might be familiar with. You, you might have actually heard some of their, their TED talks and other events that they, they speak at. But really what you're looking at are some of the, the, the world leaders in terms of ro robotics, artificial intelligence, disruptive technology. 
They're big entrepreneurs, they're academics, they're thought leaders, they advise at a, a government and a sort of a, a large corporate level. Just to give you one quick example, we've got up at the top, um, Daniela Roos. She is a professor at MIT. MIT in the United States is known as the birthplace of artificial intelligence. And she is head of what's called the AI lab at um, MIT. So for us and this, this artificial intelligence strategy, a very good person to, to, to actually engage with. Wow, this is quite a lineup. And, and obviously at Barcato everywhere, we, uh, we know uh, Louis Gav because he did an excellent job on China for us. But uh, this is a, a remarkable lineup. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw that Louis spoke, um, spoke, spoke recently. And L Louis, actually, I, I should mention, along with a, a couple of the other advisors, is actually a, a co-founder of, of Robo Global. Louis is actually our, our chairman at the moment, so we work very closely with him. And it was actually some of the early um, work, the research work that Gavcal was producing about robotics, automation, artificial intelligence, that really triggered us to, to start Robo Global. That, that there was no coverage of, of the theme. And as I said, back in 2013, that's why we actually launched the literally the, the world's first um, investment strategy focused on robotics and automation. Right. Um, so th this slide here is the investment team at Robo Global. I'm not really going to spend any time on it. Our bios are on the, the website. It's a group of ex senior portfolio managers, re research um, analysts, people with a, a strong um, capital markets um, finance type background but what, what I really want to get to is a, a question that we get asked an, an awful lot which is are, are we expecting too much from artificial intelligence is, is there a lot of hype in the market and I think that the short answer here is 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 no um, and let, let me sort of go into a bit more detail here but if, if you look at someone like McKinsey they are telling us that AI could add 16 percent or 13 trillion US dollars by 2030 to the current world, um, worldwide economic output. And our view is absolutely that AI is going to be one of the, the most disruptive tech forces in, in decades. I think if you look back at, to what electricity did in the, the, the early 20th century, or you look more recently at how mobile and internet tech has actually impacted our, our lives, you start to get a sense as to, to what's gonna happen with, with artificial intelligence. So I think the best way to look at AI is, is this offers a, a broad set of technological capabilities that can be applied to all industries. And that, that, that's really important. And this um, AI revolution is really going to continue shifting, not just how, how we communicate, but how, how we work, how we play, how we shop, how we care for our health. As I said, it's really going to be penetrating all, all industries. For businesses generally, AI is, is becoming an absolute imperative for, for creating and maintaining a competitive um, advantage. It's, it's a, an agenda at every large multinational organization. And I think for investors, it's absolutely one of the most significant opportunities out there. And that, that's obviously why we've, we've created the strategy. If we go to slide six here, you can see that AI, machine intelligence, as, as we're all aware, has actually been around since uh, the 1950s. But it's only very recently it started to hit this real sort of in inflection point. We're almost moving from this very experimental phase into much more of an era of sort of practical commercial application. And I think as a, in, investors, you know, we, we've got to remember that historically stock markets tend to underappreciate the scale of an opportunity um, in terms of new technologies at this phase of, of development. So for, for those that really sort of understand the, the, the AI opportunity, we think right now creates this, this very significant investment opportunity. The biggest challenge is that something like AI or any disruptive um, tech type theme, it's highly unstructured. There isn't that sort of perfect database of high revenue purities that you can get, go out and, and, and identify, you need a very different type of investment approach. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit of detail as to how that but works. Robo if Global. I can ask a question, what, what's the, it's around since 1950, but what do you see as the catalyst why AI is now progressing so much and not 10 or 20 years ago? 
Yeah, no, it's 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 it's, it's a great question, um, Jean Paul. And again, I, I think just in terms of sort of you know understanding AI and kind of you know what why this is 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 happening now. I think actually, if, if we look at the next slide, we we start to talk about it. But I think the first point is that AI to really be effective needs massive data sets and. Recently, we, we've seen huge growth in terms of data that's been driven by a massive advancement of, of sensors, sensors getting cheaper, sensors being able to really gather high quality data. What we've also um, had happening is massive developments in, in the chip industry. So faster, more powerful chips that are smaller, that are more adaptable, can be used in, in, in more and more situations. We've seen huge development in terms of the software and algorithms. We can now really derive value from the data. We can cleanse um, the data. Um, infrastructure is absolutely critical. This is almost something that has been holding AI back historically. We, we actually haven't had that sort of um, infrastructure framework to actually allow AI to grow. That's changed. There's still a, a lot more to come. But when you look at technologies like, like 5G, these are massive enablers for what's happening in, um, in AI. And then we, we've got sort of, you know, almost macro social type challenges. If, if we look at what's happening in terms of, of demographics, we've got significant shifts in, in, the, in the world population. And it's absolutely creating shortages in terms of skilled workers in lots of different industries. And you know, AI is, is, is a very important tool to, to help plug some of those, those gaps. Um, so I think as we said earlier, um, you know, Jean-Paul, the, you know, the, the reach of AI is enormous, it's expanding. To, to give a few examples, you know, we, we see AI today in, um, in he healthcare, we see it in telecommunications, in the semiconductor in, in industry. Um, government, retail, finance, as, as well as really the, the whole universe of, of technology. And I think in some ways it's, it's really sectors of the economy that have got scale, they've got deep pockets, they've got a deep need. Those have been the, the, the early adopters of AI. If you look more towards our daily lives, we can think about um, smart devices and virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. And I've probably just activated one in, in everyone's room. But you know, this is very much making AI part of our, our daily lives. And in the background, the enabling technology there is NLP. That's natural language processing. That's a form of AI that is able to, to create value from human speech to make decisions. And interestingly, um, Nuance is one of the absolutely um, undisputed leaders here. It's part of our AI think strategy. And just very recently, they were sold to, to Microsoft for 19.7 billion. It was a 23% premium on, on their stock price. There's an article on, on our website if you, if you want to dig in a little bit more, but it starts to, to show the, the, the value of that type of technology. Another- That, 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 that deal uh, for me, Richard, sorry to interrupt, but that, yeah. that sounded to me as, as something quite logical because Microsoft and Nuance did already work together since 2019 or so. Yeah. So they got used to each other, they see the opportunity and now they take it even further. Uh, that is the kind of deals you want to see, right? To, to get conviction that it's really happening. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if you actually look a bit, you know, take a broader lens and look at the M&A activity in, you know, the, the AI ecosystem, it, it's absolutely staggering. I mean, you know, we, we can look at the, the you know, the, the members of our AI strategy and, you know, their level of M&A activity is absolutely enormous. Just, you know, in the past few months, we've had three of our index members actually being acquired, one of them being nuances as, as we're talking about here. So, you know, that, that's, a, as you say, jean -Paul, that's a pretty good indicator that something interesting is happening here. Hmm. Um, and look, at another quick example of, you know, sort of, you know, AI around us every day is, is, is Amazon, you know, as we know, they're delivering literally billions of packages every um, year to our doorsteps in under 24 hours now. They want to get faster. Um, but, you know, that that's only possible in terms of the robotics and AI technology that they've got in their warehouses and the AI that they use now it's literally so powerful that they can they can predict what items they're likely to run out of next in the warehouse they can order it 
and the AI will determine where best to store it in the warehouse so that the, the robots can go and get it the quickest and combine it with other items that we're likely to, 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 to be ordering. And incidentally, one of our advisors, when we were looking earlier at the, um, at the Strategic Advisory Board, Raffaele D'Andrea, he was a co-founder of Kiva Systems, which is now Amazon Robotics. This is, this is it, the, the robotics and AI technology that allows Amazon to, to do all of that. Is this, is this ultimately this AI market? Would you say, is this again such a winner-takes-it-all market? Is it just simply the big tech who is going to dominate in the field and don't leave a lot for smaller players? Or can there be competition also in subsectors? No, I, I, I think, um, I mean, at, at the moment, you know, the, um, the, the AI landscape is fairly dominated by um, the, the, large, the large players. You know, you, you need deep pockets today to be investing and sort of, you know, utilizing a, a, AI. But it can, you know, it can literally be applied so deeply across society and, and, and industries. There is plenty of room for, you know, smaller players to, to come in. If we look at what's going on in, in, the, in the private sector, you know, there's just unprecedented capital flows into, you know, the startup side of it, this industry, the, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the private equity side of it, the industry as, as, as well. So it's, it's, it's going through, you know, an, an evolution, I think we can say. Okay. Um, and, you know, Jean-Paul, just to give, you know, a couple more examples here, you know, if we look at um, healthcare, we're, we're seeing, you know, AI have a significant impact there. We can talk about what's happening in genomics, precision medicine, assistive um, robots. If we also look at how AI is working alongside radiologists, it's helping them to identify very early signs of, of cancer and, 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 and disease. And I think what's important there is, you know, I said working alongside the radiologists, you know, they've actually done tests that show that the AI is more powerful when it's working with the radiologists, not replacing the, the, the radiologists. And obviously, as, as patients, the earlier we can detect signs of disease or likely problems, the better we can start to, to start to treat it, rather than almost to today's environment where we wait until we get very, very sick before we actually really understand and identify problems and, and treat them. Um, if, we, if we actually just go back to slide eight, I, I think a, a very sort of obvious follow on question here a little bit is, is where are we in terms of this, this AI adoption curve and really the, the answer is is very very early and we we tend to think about ai being deployed really in, in three ways so the, the first is really transforming the, the relationship between humans and machines and for us this is all about freeing up workers from repetitive tasks to focus on more creative work so really addressing that that skills shortage yep. that we talked about a little bit the second way that we see ai being deployed is um AI um, um, models that are reinventing existing business pr processes. So if, if we look at what's happening with the sort of RPA, the, the robotic process automation to type, type technologies, that's become a, a very active area. And then the third and probably the most interesting is where AI is actually um, really tapping into um, value that we haven't seen yet in data sets. So this is really discovering trends, it's finding insights, it's gonna drive better decision making, what we were just talking about with AI and radiologists working together to, to look at di digital images and, and um, x-rays to identify early signs of problems is a, is, a, is a great example there. And, you know, literally, you know, we, we all read the same sort of media, but there's a, there's a race at the moment across countries, industries, companies to develop and use machine learning. It's neural, this is about neural networks, it's about natural language processing as we're saying, and there's a whole range of other AI subfields that, that are starting to, to emerge. And what, what I think is really important to, you know, emphasize here, and it goes back to your question, Jean-Paul, about, you know, is it only the, the sort of the, the big boys and girls that, that are playing today, is that today's IT infrastructure, it's, it's not equipped for massive um, AI deployment and, and adoption. So from an investor's perspective, perspective, it's really important to think about the enablers of AI. So the, the companies that are really building almost the, the tools and engines that allow organizations to adopt AI 
in in a meaningful way. And if we actually go to slide nine, um, we can we can sort of talk about this in a, a bit more detail. So our our think AI strategy captures both the, the, the enablers of AI and also the, the users of AI. And actually, not not just that at the think AI strategy, but for, for our three strategies. We work very closely with the, the strategic advisory board to identify on an ongoing basis, it's not just a, a moment in time, but subsectors or really a roadmap as to where we think investors need exposure to, to each of the themes. So as we look specifically at artificial intelligence, we've really got sort of two areas of, of, of exposure here. Yeah, so the first is, you know, what I just called the, the, the users. So this is companies that are making big bets on AI and they're using AI as a real driving force for, for yep. the future of their business. And we call that the, the applications and, and services companies. The second area is what we call, as we were just talking about, the, the enablers. So these are the companies that are really actively building out that, that AI ecosystem which gives, um, which we call in infrastructure companies, which you can see in, in green on the slide. So we're going to say something, John Paul. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I was just following, looking at the green and the blue, but that is yeah. the, the two themes that you described. But it's clearly uh, visualized here, so I don't have anything to add. It's clear for me. Yeah, and then let me give a couple of quick examples. So you know, companies like um, Shopify and and Wix. Um, yeah, we can stay here. It's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, these are part of the, the e-commerce subsector under applications and services. And, you know, they, they leverage AI to, to help create very personalized e-commerce platforms and experiences. They've got website design tools for, for SMEs. And this is so easy to use. You know, as, as an SME, you can start to do this in, in, in minutes. So, again, it goes back to your question a little bit, John Paul, earlier. You know, is this just restricted to the big players? You know, here's an example of companies that are enabling SMEs to actually start, you know, competing in an e-commerce environment with the big players. And we think technology like this is really well positioned um, um, in terms of, you know, cloud solutions combined with, with AI capabilities. You know, it's clearly where... A lot of industries yeah. are, but could uh, I like the example? But could you elaborate a bit more? Because perhaps my my view of it is too simple. But for example, Shopify, they they enable businesses to easily set up a website and a web shop. But what what is the AI element in what they offer? Is isn't yeah, it just web shops? What's What's the AI? Uh, it's, about? It's, 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 a, it's a lot deeper. So it's really, it's, it's the AI that's behind the engine that will, you know, it will start to understand and spot patterns about, you know, when we order, what we order. It will start to suggest other items that you might want to start looking at. It's kind of that Netflix model, you know, Jean Paul, where, you know, when I go onto Netflix now, I get not bombarded, but I get this flow of suggested content. And it's based on, right. you know, who I am, what time of day it is what I've watched in, in the past. And it's just, it's it's learning all, all of the time. So it's really about that sort of, you know, that, that customized kind of shopping experience and really pushing content that's relevant to you. Because if it's irrelevant, it annoys you and you probably don't rush back to, you know, continue using, you know, that. Okay, that. so you, you could say this is a model and, and, you know, perhaps I should know this already in advance, but I would say what we know already from, from Amazon and Alibaba, is now getting available through a yeah. company like Shopify also for smaller and medium companies to have the technology behind it. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, so that, that, that's a significance. Yeah, it's, it's very well put. And I think what's important there is, you know, the, the addressable market starts to become very large. So it's yeah, not just about, that. you know, trying to service the, the big boys and girls that do it themselves anyway. But suddenly, if, you know, if you start going into, you know, SMEs and enabling, it becomes... You know, very powerful. Um, and, you know, another example just on the, the other side, Jean-Paul, in terms of looking at um, in infrastructure, there's companies in here, the, the, the Splunk, there's Twilio, there's Alterix. They all sit in the, the, the big data analytics subsector and they enable um, software developers and businesses to really build this whole new generation of intelligent applications using their, their API. APIs. They're very good at analyzing very quickly massive data sets. And they've got collaboration tools 
so that you know the the, the company can work very quickly together to, to to build this out. And again, it's really about getting AI capabilities out to the broader market, so something that that, that everybody can can use. Yeah, is there uh, apart from obviously your own website um, and mailing list that we will get to at some point, but. Is there a website that you would recommend where people can follow this AI, even on a specialized website, or is it the general tech websites that we need to look at? Um, you know, it's, 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 a good, it's a good question. I mean, obviously, I, I could self-promote a, a little bit because, as you say, we, we do put out a, a bi-weekly. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. A bi-weekly newsletter. It's not just about AI. It's about it's about the other two strategies as well. But you know, AI is a very common thread through through you know not just this one, obviously, but the, the other two as well. And that content's coming from our research team. It's about the companies that we're investing in. We're looking at the private sector as well. We're trying to identify trends to share insights, and also a lot of the content actually comes from our advisors. So you can actually see what people like you know Professor Danielle LaRousse at MIT are excited about right now in the world of AI. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think, um, you know, we, we sort of, you know, touched on a few, a few examples, you know, here, Jean-Paul, of, you know, where, where AI is, is, is being, being deployed and, you know, to, you know, perhaps summarize a couple of others, you know, we haven't talked about cybersecurity, but in terms of, you know, threat detection and prevention, you know, AI yeah. is, is a, a very important tool. We talked about that, you know, personalized sort of, you know, shopping, customer experience, services experience, autonomous driving, you know, is, is, is a whole area. Um, credit card fraud, bank fraud detection, this is becoming important. You know, on the healthcare side, I think I mentioned some of this, but, you know, drug discovery, ge genomic um, and analysis, you know, it, it's becoming very important. And all of these are themes that we're capturing within the subsector. So, you know, th these are all, you know, areas of AI where, you know, we see large scale ongoing developments that are going to occur over time that we think investors need exposure to. And I should stress that, you know, these, these subsectors are not set in stone. They're constantly and almost gently evolving. Evolving, yeah. AI yeah. opportunity expands. I liked it a lot. Good. Shall we look at the performance? Yes, yes, let's let, let's do that. And I, I think, you know, as, as investors on the call, everybody likes their, their signals. And I, I think there's some pretty strong signals um, out there that, you know, it's time to pay attention to, to AI. So if we just start in the public markets, we, we've got on, on the chart here, we've got our Think AI index. That's the sort of the, the blue green line. It's a basket of, of 72 best in class companies. You can see here that the three and five year annualized numbers are 34 and 38%. So massive outperformance over global equities. The dotted line in 2018, um, everything to the right is live data. Everything to the left is, is back data. So obviously past performance is not an indicator. Ah, okay, yeah, I see it, yeah. Of future, future performance. And as I said at the beginning, John, I think what's so important when you look at this portfolio of 72 companies, there's no concentrated bets. You know, the largest exposure to a single company as we rebalance each quarter is typically under 2%. So we're kind of we're reliant on the whole portfolio to be driving this, this, this performance, not just a few concentrated bets. OK, that's differentiating from from other indices that I've seen. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. It, it is. And it's, you know, it's, it's very deliberate. I mean, we, we've almost got this sort of, you know, strategy where we, we've combined a active research with the guidance of the, those, those industry experts, and we've delivered the strategy very deliberately as, a, as an index. We, we think right now, the world of, of indexing, where we employ this modified equal weighting for, for quarterly rebalancing, you know, it's, it's very powerful. It's the best way to tap into this, this theme. We're not trying to sort of second guess what's gonna happen short term and we've really spread our bets you know we, we've got right now 72 companies you know any of which could be massive movers at any moment in 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 time and i think well you know it's 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 a bit of an annoying question but i know how people watch these kind of charts is obviously the returns on three year five year the full period it, it speaks for itself but what what what's going on this year why it's lagging it's it's a, it, it's unfair to address the whole thing, but I see it here, and I can imagine people wonder. 
Yeah, no, that, that, that's that, that, that's fine. Look, I mean, I think, you know, we, we all know the, the story in, you know, 2020, there was, you know, a huge, you know, sort of, you know, run, you know, positive run for, for, for tech. And, you know, in, in particular, the, the Think um, Index, you know, had some real sort of, you know, leadership there, some massive outperformance. As we came into to Q1, we saw the sort of the broad sort of, you know, tech universe really start to, to stall effectively as investors were looking much more for that their cyclical, their, their value type, type stocks. You know, we were, you know, there was concern about, you know, in, in inflation, we had rising in interest rates. There was definitely some, some profit taking as well. So, you know, in some ways, yeah, there was a, a real sort of, you know, cool down in terms of, you know, some of these these tech companies. But I think despite the volatility, you know, as, as we look at the opportunity, you know, AI fueled by this ongoing digital transformation, you know, it, it, the opportunity remains really, really strong. As we talk to the companies and, you know, we look at their guidance, we look at their order backlogs, we look at how they're increasing their, their R&D spend, you know, the, the sort of the, the core fundamentals just look stronger than ever. Yeah. And I think if anything, this valuation pullback, I think it's welcome, you know, in the market. <laughs> given where we were, it's, it's probably going to drive a lot of M&A activity. You know, it's going to, you know, sort of, you know, push exactly. a lot more interest. I can agree on that. Um, but, you know, ju just just staying on this topic of, of sort of signals, if, if, if we can, Sean Paul, you know, we, we talked yeah, about sure. public markets. Yeah, if we just go to slide 11, you know, another, another signal here, and we mentioned it earlier, is, is sort of, you know, AI funding. If you look at someone like IDC, um, they're forecasting that the spending on cognitive and AI systems is going to grow from about 12 billion in 2017 to 78 billion in 2022. So we're, we're almost there. We're way beyond track. You know, another signal we can look at is patent filing, you know, particularly obviously in, in, in the private sector. You know, that continues to grow with a, a very high double digit CAGA. You know, th this area of tech is now one of the fastest growing categories of, of all patent filing. You know, m and data, there's a couple of data points, you know, on, on the slide here. As I said earlier, we've had three acquisitions of Think AI members just in the past few, few months below. And I, I think the final signal, you know, Jean-Paul, that's really interesting is when you look at this Think portfolio that the 72 companies, you're not taking an early tech bet here on, on the company. So if investors are thinking, well, you know, I might just wait for these companies to become a bit more established and, and profitable, they already are. You know, this, this portfolio, just like our robotics and automation and healthcare tech, these are well-established, proven, high-quality companies. If you specifically look at the Think AI universe of so the 72 companies, 70% of those companies have no debt on, on their balance sheet. And if you contrast that to the S&P, it's at 18%. So you just get a sense as to, you know, just, just how high quality these yeah. companies are. Yeah. I am triggered by these numbers. And if, if I look at the, the second uh, picture or numbers, you know, the top 100 AI startup deals. Yeah. Uh, can, can I say um, it, it's, it's only 11 billion? It's, it's, it's obviously startups and for startups, it's a lot of money, but in, in more than 300 deals. So there's no unicorns yet in this environment or how do I read this number? Yeah, so th th this is the, the very early stage. So, you know, right. pre series A, si 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 series B. So, um, ah, OK, yeah. so it's really, really early stage uh, getting in there. Yeah, correct. And, and the, 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 the middle column, China. Yeah, the word the word has come up again. <laughs> where where are we in in the battle between the West and the East? Are the Chinese doing this better than in the U.S., where Robo Global is situated, or is it equal? Or how do you look at it? And for example, looking at a, I've I've, I've read a lot in the last few days about Huawei, yeah, uh, which is obviously not listed, uh, blacklisted in the U.S., but. Uh, they seem to make a, a lot of progress in terms of edge computing. I think they have already some 300 devices connected to their Harmony operating system. But how do you look at this, this competition? Yeah, look, Jean-Paul, there's clearly an a AI race. And yes, the, you know, the, 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 big, the big players are US and, and China. 
China and you know Europe is a, a distant a distant third at the moment. Um, you know, what, what Huawei is almost a good place to start. You know, you know, and clearly, you know, as events really started to escalate last last summer, you know, their five G network, their smartphone business is is you know is is going to be you know challenged as as we start to look forward off off the back of the. Um, the, the U.S. sanctions, but I think if anything, you know, that that's driven China to move faster to being almost, you know, more tech self self reliant. You know, if you look specifically at what they're doing in terms of chip manufacturing, you know, there's been this, you know, you know, very, you know, sort of, you know, ongoing shift to having, um, you know, that their own d domestic chip production. You know, that will absolutely start over time to be felt in global markets but you know there's some big challenges here you know at, at the moment we've got the, the the international particularly you know the sort of you know u.s t t taiwanese you know tight companies that really dominate that high value segments of of you know the, the, the chip world china also has a massive reliance in terms of their supply chain on in international c companies so you know a lot a lot needs to change but I think a flip side is, in some ways, is that a lot of the, the big China tech companies, they probably feel more commercially aligned to, to Beijing than, than ever before, you know, given the sort of that, that, the, the, um, the sanctions that have come from the, come from the, the international community. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a race. Who's ahead now? You know, maybe, maybe the US slightly, um, but there's, there's just there's so many moving parts to this. Yeah, it attracts attention everywhere. Shall we, uh, shall we go on? Yeah, so I think um, if, we, if we go back to, I think, slide 12, what I was hoping to do is just go into a bit more detail about how, how investors should almost approach the, the AI theme. And, you know, I'm you know, really going to use our, our, our strategy as, as, as an example here. And, you know, the reason I'm comfortable doing that, because, you know, we've, we put this strategy in the market for, for our own money as well as well as for um, as well as for, for third parties as well. But what we've done for, for seven years really is is to combine fundamental research from, from our in-house analysts, um, guided by the industry experts on on the uh, advisory board that we were looking at earlier. And as I said, we've really wrapped around that what we see as the, the quantitative benefits of of indexing um, investing particularly around modified equal weighting and, and the quarterly rebalance. What we're always doing with our strategies and particularly AI is taking a, a longer term view. We think it's critical that you have a diversified portfolio of, of, of companies. We think it's too early to be taking concentrated bets. So what you can see on slide 12 here are, again, what we call the, the 11 subsectors that we looked at earlier. So this is what we've identified with the advisors as to where it, um, investors need exposure. On the left-hand side, under the pie chart, you can see the percentage weights um, across each of the subsectors. Nothing is force weighted here. It's just an outcome as to how deep we want to go into the subsector and then also just how many public companies that there are that we can actually get exposure to. And then on the right hand side, you can see the Q1 um, 2021 performance and then also the performance for, for the 12 months prior to that. If you actually look year to date, the performance of the strategy overall right now is, is about 6.5 percent versus the, the negative 1.2 that you can see for Q1. Yeah. Um, yep. So I think, um, you know, our. Our view is that you don't just want to be investing narrowly into AI. You know, it's, it's, this is a very you know volatile theme. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of you know risks in terms of regulation in, in, in infrastructure. Who's going to trump who with a, a particular piece piece of technology? So we think it's really important to you know have this broad diversified exposure. Also, frankly, each of these eleven subsectors has got a very significant growth opportunity. And I think when you combine them, you know, with the, the enablers, the, the users, you've got that um, broad, diversified strategy. We've actually got a much better chance of, you know, of, of getting some of the, the big the big winners as, as, as well. In terms of what's been um, the top performer, you can see in Q1, the, the top performing subsector was um, semiconductors. That's 14 percent of the strategy at the moment. Year to date, it's actually at about 16.5%. And, you know, there's this whole new generation of microprocessors, 
specifically for AI. They're designed to process AI tasks faster, to use less power as they do it. To give you a little bit of context, you know, the, the AI chip market is probably um, north of 7 billion US dollars at the, at the moment. Over the next few years, it will exceed 90 billion U US dollars. So just, just some staggering growth. It's and going to explode, right? It's, uh, uh, ab yeah. Ab yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the, the subsector here, you know, we've got some of the, 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 the big, you know, AI data center um, leaders here. So you'll see NVIDIA, you'll see AMD, you'll see A ASML, but we've also got some lesser known companies that are going to massively benefit as well. So Amberella, Brooks Automation, um, Teradyne, Global Unichip are, are all in there. Um, let me just give a couple more examples if I can, uh, Jean-Paul, you know, the, the top performer, um, during Q1 was a company in France that's so called um, Talend. Um, they sit in a big data analytics subsector. They're an absolute leader in terms of data integration. They've actually just um, entered into a, an agreement fairly recently to be acquired by Thoma Bravo. It's um, a $2.4 billion deal. It represents sure. a 29% premium. And you know, talent helps organizations move data, manage their data, and really use the data more, more efficiently. It's been a member of the strategy since, um, since inception. And over the past 12 months, they, they've had about 120% um, move. So, you know, wow. it's, yeah, it's been very- That is the kind of stocks that, you know, we as individual investors uh, or, you know, smaller asset managers can never find, right? It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's excellent to have that all in an index because you don't know what's happening where. and. Uh, yeah, with no, no, definitely, definitely. And so slide 13, you know, Jean-Paul, I, I feel like I've touched a lot of this and there's quite a bit of detail here, but this is the, the member selection pr pr process. Um, this is your internal process, right? Yeah, it, it, it is. And, you know, I, I'm just going to be very light on it now and just sort of, you know, emphasize again, it, it's about combining active research. We look at a series of kind of filters um, and we score each company's, the highest scoring companies go, go yeah. into the, the strategy. Eventually, the score will determine their, their weight. And something that's just, you know, I, th I think worth mentioning here is that, you know, when you look at this, this universe, the revenue purity is a lot lower than other themes we look at, like robotics and healthcare tech. So, you know, the true exposure to AI for a lot of these companies is low. And that's why we put a lot of emphasis on this filter that you can see here on the left hand side investment. So we look very deeply at how companies are investing into AI. It's not just about R&D, CapEx type spend. It's about are they building AI? AI development centers or centers of excellence will look at their AI staffing. How many software developers, you know, are, are they actually onboarding? What's, what's their success at retaining, you know, sort of a, AI staff? How many AI staff are they actually trying to, you know, actually attract in, in, into the company? And we bring all of that together in this, this investment filter and really use it as a, a leading forward indicator of likely revenues in, in the future. So, you know, as I said earlier, it's not it's not easy getting exposure to, to, to these these types of themes. It's not this sort of perfect universe of companies where you can just apply some traditional financial metrics and you know zoom into the, the companies. Yep. And if we just go to the next slide. Actually, I'll skip through this and the next one. Sorry, Jean Paul. If we go to slide 16. Okay. Um, so you know, you know, another question we get asked an awful lot is, you know, is the AI theme captured in, in broad tech in indices today? Yeah. So, you know, do, do I need to look for a, a specialized AI strategy? And, you know, the, the, the answer is, you know, it's not captured in broad tech indices. And if we look at the data on the, the left hand side here, it's actually it's actually quite telling. So what we've done here is we we've looked at the 72 members that are in the think strategy and we've compared the member weight by percentage across a number of other strategies. So top two, we've just looked at some broad global equity strategies. It's about 13% member overlap there. Then we've looked at 11 other AI ETFs and funds that, that are in the market. And I think this is pretty staggering. The, met, the average member overlap is only 18%. So although the headline name says artificial intelligence for all of us, 
when you actually start to compare what's in there, it's very, very different. So everyone's got a very different view as to what is AI and how best to actually play the theme. This is perhaps the number I'm, I'm most surprised about, you know, that it's only 18%. So that, that gives definitely some, uh, some uh, further research to do to look at it. But the, and on these 11, then you also take into account pure American indices, so to say, yeah, we're here in, in Europe, but I'll look at, into that. We look at usage, but not 11 of these are all usage, right? It's, Correct. So this is, yeah, the, the, the European sort of, you know, USITs, plays, ETFs and funds, that's what, said. Yeah. what you see in, in the US. But only 18%. It's a low number. It is. It is. And then also, you know, if, if you take the same sort of analysis and look at broad tech indices, and we, we've looked at 10 here, compared it to the, the Think Index, it's about an 18% member overlap again. So, you know, it, kind of the message here is that you, you can't rely on broad tech indices to give you your true AI exposure. And as you look at different AI options in, in, in the market, they're very different. Yeah. Yeah. What does Fair Isaac, that's now your, your top holding, I don't know that company, what's, what's it doing? Oh, Fair Isaac is, is all um, in, in the credit card sort of banking industry, all about fraud all right. detection. So very... But very, very specialized, but you know, it's just a you know great example where you know AI is absolutely at the heart of what what the, what they do. Okay. Well, I know some Dutch banks who probably should reach out to Fair Isaac then. then <laughs> to, uh... Yeah. Um, so look, Jean Paul. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was most of what I what I wanted to to talk about. You know, obviously, you know, happy to hear if you've got any other questions. I can see you've got yeah our ESG slide here. That there is there is an ESG policy. Uh, of course, yeah. Adhere to it's a live filter in the process, and we have removed companies from the strategy who failed the ESG policy. But I'll, I'll let people come and talk to us about that if I wanted to go yeah, into sure. more more detail. Yeah, perhaps one question that comes to mind is, uh, you know, you 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 showed us that semiconductors is uh, semiconductors is such a is fourteen percent of your yeah. strategy. We hear all about the shortages. Yeah, that, that's a temporary effect, or do you think it will slow down some AI processes? I, I don't. I don't think it's. It's. I wouldn't call it short term. I mean, you know, clearly the sort of semiconductor industry is going through. You know, it's really you know an unprecedented you know upcycle. You know, just massive demand. Yes, we've got a very tight supply chain. Um, you know, this is probably going to take us into twenty twenty two before you know we actually you know almost work work through this. But I think what's happening is, is the, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of us that expect almost prioritization. So the sort of the high margin, the high value areas or um, um, companies, you know, are getting prioritized in terms of sort of, you know, the, the, the chip production, the, the ongoing design. So anything to do with, you know, AI, cloud, data centers, edge computing, 5G, autonomous vehicles. So everywhere that we're investing is, is probably going to be a, a, absolutely fine. And, you know, it won't be a hindrance. So they'll continue to sort of expand their businesses. And as you said, John Paul, you know, the fact that 14% of the strategy relates to semiconductors and, you know, there, there is tightness in, in the supply chain, that's probably going to be very good for that subset. Very good for, well. yeah. Yeah. during this period so you know it, it's it's more it's it's kind of you know areas of tech where we don't have exposure but probably you know our viewers are, are going to be more impacted okay good um i was looking for this slide where i think you have your newsletter right if, if people want to follow it at robo global they go to your website and they can easily subscribe there for a newsletter yeah. Yes. Um, it's, um, it's it's roughly a bi-weekly. It's uh, as I said earlier. I think content that comes from from the advisors. It comes from the research team. We put out quarterly reports. You'll see M and A reports there. Um, the quarterly report gets into the kind of the details as to what's driving driving performance. It will look out over over the next year as well. We've got interviews with CEOs of some of the, the companies that we're we're investing in into. And I just think it's, it's a very good way to stay, you know, I don't want to call it updated, but just to stay educated and to have real examples as to, you know, what's, what's happening around disruptive tech. 
Yeah, and, and if people do this and obviously they have questions, it's also nice in the markets are everywhere environment to chat about it and have uh, discussions. Um, Richard, I, I'd like to thank you a lot for this very insightful presentation. I'm, I'm very glad that we uh, took the time to look at AI because it's, this is really for me one of the, the opportunities in let's say the next decade. But I'm also glad that we already agreed to do another one within a month on healthcare because there's a lot yeah. going on as well. So thank you for now and uh, look forward to, um, to the next video. Fantastic, thank you very much, Jean-Paul.